Welcome to another episode of the Headlight Restoration Pro, where I'll be showing you how to take headlights like these and turn them into something like this. A wonderful headlight restoration and a joyous headlight restoration experience to work with these Mini Coopers. Wonderful. The Headlight Restoration Pro. Let's get down to business. As the title would suggest, uh, working here with a 2010 Mini Cooper, um, it is a joy to work with. You see that piece right there that I'm pulling out? You always want to be gentle with that. Uh, most European vehicles come with this. Um, you know, the late models come with uh, that is a um, like a sprinkler system or a headlight wash, just uh, designed to clean your headlights. Um, it does remove uh, with the uh, with the right touch, but you want to be careful with that um, as a restore I would remove it I would just deal with it and play with it because in the past um, I have um, you know I'm not perfect I've <laughs> had some bad issues with uh, these once or twice uh, not on this vehicle um, uh, have uh, actually tried to pull one off and it has um, uh, broke or you know the vehicle was too old it was 2006 or something and uh, it just broke and uh, I had to replace them uh, this vehicle happened to be a Porsche I'm speaking of so now I just kind of tape them up I just lift them a little bit instead of trying to detach them because I mean bad things can happen when trying to detach them so I would stray away from that especially if it's not your vehicle but as you see why I say it's a wonderful one of the reasons main reasons why I'm saying it's a wonderful joyous headlight restoration when I get ready to do one of these, I'm actually really happy. <laughs> Theoretically, yes. um, being the shape of this light, um, if you've ever had the experience of doing a round light, uh, whether it be a motorcycle, um, this one's even worse because it's bigger. Um, a round light of a Mini Cooper, uh, if the trunk won't open. Uh, sometimes, I, um, I don't know why, but uh, I've had more than two in my experience that has had trunk issues and the trunk can open. It's kind of weird. Um, this is a European vehicle, right? But the trunk opens, um, or the hood opens, uh, you know, when you pop the hood, it's not center. It's off probably um, if it's a uh, right, you know, if it's a passenger side vehicle like uh, the Americanized ones, if it's not the one with the, you know, driver's side on the left side or whatever, whatever. But usually it's off centered uh, by about a foot and a half. So you got to find it. Um, I've had the pleasure of dealing with two of them that had um, hood popping issues. They couldn't pop the hood for some reason. And I uh, had to do the headlight restoration with the hood down and pretty much tape off the whole round piece and being that it's round you have to pull little tiny pieces off little tiny pieces off and go all the way around it and you got to be careful because the way it sits in there you can damage the chrome around them so you really got to do a real good tape job and it takes forever little tiny half inch inch pieces to make a turn because you can't tape if you know what I'm talking about you can't tape a circle with a straight piece of tape it just takes it just doesn't work out right so anyhow um, as you see uh, all I did is tape off around here and tape off this thing here and this tape right here is just a precaution just to be safe you probably really don't have to do that um, but being that I'm spraying and you just want to be safe I put a little bit of tape there you know not a huge uh, tape off job like I normally do and that's one of the reasons why I say it's a joyous, it's a wonderful headlight uh, to work with, okay? The other reason is, you see how much snow is coming up there? The consistency of this particular European car, uh, Mini Coopers, and I haven't had met one that was any different than the consistency. So uh, usually each, you, you, if you start doing a lot of headlights, you start getting like, you know, 10 Civics under your belt or, or 10 different Hondas under your belt. And you have, you know, 12 different Fords and 13 different European vehicles and 14 Kias and stuff like that. You kind of start being able to understand the uh, chemical makeup um, uh, and note, let me explain. Um, when I say chemical makeup, these are made of chemicals. Okay, I had some guy saying, what do you mean? It's a solid, it's not a chemical. And I had to explain to him in the, in the, in the uh, link, you know, I laugh at it because it, it, it does sound weird. Like, it's a solid, what do you mean? It's not a chemical. But no, uh, everything that's pretty much synthetic 
it, that's not natural on earth is made up of chemicals or has chemical additives. Even our food has chemical additives nine times out of ten unless you eat organic, 100% organic. Um, but like uh, solid, anything that's solid, it, you know, it can still be a chemical makeup. Paint on a wall, paint on a car, um, a st uh, styrofoam cup. You know, this is all 100% synthetic material made from chemical composites. Uh, it's chain, ke uh, chain chemicals pretty much put together. They were a uh, more than likely a liquid at first and they became pressed into a solid or dry into solid, heated into solid, or something like that. So that's just a little disclaimer because I don't want people freaking out. I've had more than one person say, what do you mean the chemical composite of a headlight? It's it's not liquid. It's a solid. There's no such thing as chemically changing a headlight. Like, it's, it, it, it is a chemical. Okay, polycarbonate is a chemical. So anyways, um, the makeup of different vehicles are different. They're not all the same. Uh, some are terrible to work with. Some are wonderful to work with. Say like a lot of European cars, as uh, far as uh, Mercedes and BMWs are quite temperamental and quite take a little bit more skill to work with. They're um, a pain in the butt. Uh, say like... Um, Vehicles, uh, Japanese, Chinese uh, vehicles are very easy to work with. The Lexuses, the Toyotas, uh, stuff like that are very easy to work with. Very nice, you know, pleasurable. But this, um, the ones that are kind of in between, and the reason why is the um, the uh, the European ones are, tend to be uh, harder. They run harder, okay? Harder ones are more hard to work with. The softer lights are easy to work with. Um, the Europe, you know, the the um, Chinese, Japanese type cars, they have they are soft, very easy to work with, very easy to work with, almost too easy in some cases. You have to uh, be real gentle with like some certain Lexus headlights because you don't want to be uh, scarring or overheating and different things like that with them. Uh, so they're almost a little too soft. And, uh, but with these, uh, primarily Mini Cooper cars, I'm always happy because they are the perfect pitch. Believe it or not, they are kind of uh, um, like between a soft and a hard. They're like medium, like a medium as it gets. But as you see how white they turn and how much snow kicks off or whatever, uh, it's really a wonderful experience. And it's, um, you know, it just it feels good as a uh, headlight restore to uh, work on a vehicle like this. But number one, of course, like I said, is look at the structure around the headlight. You don't have to worry about um, damaging anybody's paint. You you have like a, you know, maybe a two, three minute tape off job, you know, just to tape that little piece off there and this little strip here, you know, maybe three minute max. So you can pretty much, you know, what I like to do is I tape off both sides before I get started. Uh, just so I don't have to deal with it. I don't want to like to be working in mid stroke of working and getting into it And then like I'm done with the first line then I'm like fuck I gotta tape again So I tape them both at once and then I run through my work um, gauntlet until it's done and then I take the tape off after I let the uh, um, uh, Sealant dry or whatever, but look at look how I'm moving through this light here. It's just it's I love working on these cars It's one of my favorite ones to work with long as the hood pops if the hood doesn't pop, it's a pain dealing with a circle light like this. But being it's not surrounded by any kind of car, really, or anything like that. I'm going here with the, uh, the P800. But being that it's not any... Um, see, look at all the snow. Look at all that dust. Look at all that snow. It just comes apart really nice. Polishes up really good. Um, you know, it's real easy to work with. You know, a really gentle touch to it. And um, you just look at it. You can tell how I'm moving through it. And just look at the surface of it. And look how gently I'm touching it. It's a really um, nice pitch of light to work with. Not too soft. Not too hard. You don't got to baby it. And you don't got to um, uh, be a rocket scientist to do a headlight restoration on a Mini Cooper. Okay, the damage, uh, um, the probability of damage is super low. Just look around here. Look around here and all this. The headlight is not touching any kind of paint. It's almost like they designed, uh, you know, the hood popping of this vehicle, of these Mini Coopers, to uh, aid headlight restoration. <laughs> of course they didn't, but uh, the way they designed it, uh, like a side effect, does aid whoever's going to be doing headlight restoration with it. It makes it a wonderful headlight experience. If you could, um, 
you know, get your hands on a, a Mini Cooper and practice on one. It's a good practice vehicle, um, you know, as far as the pitch and just far as not being able to, uh, you, you know, you'd have to be trying to damage something on one of these vehicles to damage anything. Uh, you know, um, that's a big issue when you're using uh, power tools or even by hand. It's a big issue you have to always worry about uh, is damaging the out the outer paint or the outer chrome on lights um, because it's always surrounded by something nine times out of ten but with the mini coopers you know every year i've done um i believe this is a, this is a 2010 but every year i have done a uh, mini cooper is um always just been such a uh, you know wonderful headlight restoration and i'm rather flying through this one here um and they, um, you know, it's just easy all the way around. Um, you know, not just saying it's um, good because it's easy. Um, it's just good because uh, you don't have to worry about as much stuff with uh, one of these. And, um, you know, you, you know, it's foolproof damn near. If you can do any um, headlight uh, good, it's a Mini Cooper. Even more so than a... Um, you know, say a flat surface, a broad surface, flat light or something. It's even more pleasurable than that, uh, or a more, more, um, uh, just a better headlight restoration than that, just because the shape of it and just that there's nothing else around it. It's almost like you, um, almost like removing a headlight. When you remove a headlight, you have no worry about doing anything. But doing headlights raw or doing headlights naked, meaning that they're not attached to the vehicle by themselves, is, um, you know, look at that, look at that. You always want to get in between there. You always want to keep that stuff sterile in between there. You don't want gunk of stuff building up. But um, to do a headlight without anything around it, you have that peace of mind that there's nothing around it. You don't, you can't possibly mess up. And that you can also get real good into the spots that you normally can't reach, you know, as far as your finished product your spring and stuff I can get all around there and and then that area there and inside there you know real deep but uh, when you're you know it's not attached to the vehicle you don't have something that uh, you know 2,000 pounds holding it still for you okay which makes it a lot more difficult to do a loose headlight than a headlight attached and people are always like oh, some people um, like why don't you just take them out and this and that okay for one most headlights are going to be uh, most modern day vehicle headlights. Okay. Especially the newer ones, like from, uh, let's like say like 2010 and up are going to be extremely difficult to take off. I mean, on my, on my vehicle alone, I have a 2013 Acura TL. You have to, um, drop the fender. You have to drop yeah. half of the, um, the fender well and sometimes even yeah. take <laughs> off the tires. I have 20 inch tires. So I'd have to take off my tires on my rims and tires, drop half the fender well uh, at least drop the um the bumper just to take off the headlights now who wants to do that like can you imagine pull up to somebody's house and do all that they'd be like get the hell out of here you fucking crazy right or even pulling up to a shop and having them do it is they're gonna be like okay it's gonna be what it's going to be a lot of labor. They're going to charge you $210 of labor. They're going to charge you two, maybe more than that, $300 of labor, because it's probably, uh, it's probably going to be like, what, an hour to take the bumper apart and do all that stuff, get ready to take the headlights off and, and take them off. And it's going to be another hour to reverse the process, let alone service the headlights. Uh, believe it or not, this is true because I've had it estimated and um, I've had it uh, through nor uh, numerous customers that, that um, you know, buy their headlights. I've even had headlights um, given to me oh, for a discount because they bought the headlights that were, you know, were aftermarket or whatever and said, um, I went to go, you know, I bought them. I thought I was going to save money instead of going with your headlight restoration. And now I can't return them and all this stuff like that. But, um, you know, they figure, okay, the headlight restoration costs this much. And I'm going to get uh, these two aftermarket headlights. And it's just going to be a little bit more, you know, it's going to be a little bit more, you know, maybe 40 bucks more. But they're brand new and, you know, this and that. Which doesn't mean that they're going to be better than headlight restoration. A true headlight restoration, like what I perform, is going to uh, come out a lot better than um, a uh, brand new headlight but you see right there one second let me break on that but what I'm showing you here is a quick way how to resurface um, 
the um, uh, 3M finesse pad there. You know, I just scrape it up a little bit with something like uh, my cap or whatever, and just, you know, get some of that old, you see that I turn it on, fling all that stuff around, get some of that old caked on stuff off, okay? Uh, I have a guy in my DMs that keeps asking how to uh, resurface. There's many ways to resurface. Sometimes I just grind it on a rough uh, cement real quick, but you gotta know what you're doing with that because you're gonna take off half of your pad if you don't. That is the most friendliest way I just showed you now. And I'll show you some more in the futures. Uh, but anyways, where I was is... Yeah, so you might find a pair of aftermarkets, which I would never recommend anybody getting. Here, check out this video here and you'll see why. It's one of uh, a video I made a couple months ago. Uh, you should never buy aftermarket headlights because they're just crap. The polycarbonate is crap. Everything about it is crap. And you, you, you gotta know that, like, like I always say, polycarbonate. It can be like, um, it's it, it's it's just a uh, outcome, a chemical outcome. Okay, it can be made so many different ways with so many different additives, and people can cut corners just like anything else. Look how look how shiny that is. Let me pause. Look how shiny that is already before I spray it. Always spray your headlight shiny. But anyhow. Uh, they fall apart on the insides. They they crack. The clear coat on them is garbage. There's so many things about them is wrong. And you're going to be dealing with them again probably within a year, probably within two years. And I'm not talking about getting a headlight restoration. I'm talking about like uh, maybe the whole stuff's peeling or they're cracking or they're shorting out on the inside. It's the worst idea to ever get unless you're going to sell it and you don't care and you just want it to look good because you're selling it, which is kind of sucky to do to somebody. Um, but I mean, it is what it is. It's doggy dog world. Um, but, uh, you know, they go, oh, okay, it's going to be 180 It's going to be $200 for these headlights. It's cool. But then when you take them somewhere to get them put in and they tell you, hey, it's going to take an hour to put it, take its shit apart and put them in. It's going to take, a, uh, you know, another hour to, you know, to put them back in and reverse everything. So you, I'm going to charge you for two and a half hours and you got to come back and, you know, four or five hours because uh, we're not going to be done there. We have other cars to work on as well. They're going to be like, damn. So now I got to come there and get a ride and, and it's going to and it's going to cost me, you know, two and a half hours of mechanics work. That's, you know, it's probably like. 300 bucks or something. Kind of paid a lot of money. So, I mean, you know, you're just, you're just beating yourself. And then it's still not even going to be better as uh, somebody of my level doing a headlight restoration because um, it's more of an intricate process and um, it just comes out a lot better. That's why I say, uh, you know, why people say, why does it look better than the day I bought it? I've owned this car since and they've never looked this good. And I have to explain to them it's a, a quality type thing. When you're getting a headlight that's made from a, um, you know, a shop or made from a, you know, made from a, um, car uh, manufacturer or something it's just pushed through a machine it's pressed you know through a machine it's 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 uh, uh, injection molded plastic which just means that they inject it into a mold and then they press it you know into the shape okay with heat okay it's a heat molded injection plastic whatever blah 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 it's just tech terms but pretty much they just shoot the foot they shoot the uh, polycarbonate into this mold and then they press it with this heat to um, mold this and they cool it off and then they spray it with the damn uh, UV clear coat. That's it. Now, when you have somebody who's doing a clear coat that's as skilled as me, you know, they're sanding all that stuff down, they're polishing it up, they're touching how much more intricate is it. It's like more like a handmade thing, so it's going to be better. It's going to look better, it's going to perform better, it's going to be better instead of just some machine. Uh, also, um, you know, it's other things in involved too as well, but I'm not going to go into that too much. But look how beautiful this headlight turned out. While I was running my mouth this whole time. <laughs> but it's all educational. This is educational. Now check that out. Look at that. Perfect. Better than a day rolled off the lot. Got my uh, air. Got my forced air going. Now look at that. All the way around the headlight. You can see why I say it's such a joy. You don't have to worry about anything. You, do, you don't even have to worry about spraying or overspraying or anything like that. Pretty Damn. nice. Look at that. Gorgeous. Sexy. Beautiful. Yes. You want your lights to look like this. Watch this channel. If you own a Mini Cooper or not, the same process is translated into any kind of headlight out there. They are all pretty much the same. 
okay? They're a little bit different. It's almost like they're all cheeseburgers, but there's a million different kind of cheeseburgers, okay? Well, I'm the chef, and I'm here to show you. I'm the, I'm the burger chef. I'm the burger master. I'm here to show you <laughs> what's up with this. <laughs> Put on the real. I'm the Headlight Restoration Pro, and it's coming at you the off of the mouth. Uh, this is a wonderful Headlight Restoration. But uh, I just wanted to show you this here. This is the beginning before I tape. This is that little piece there. I want you guys to uh, worry about that. See how far I can pull that? I can actually detach that, but you don't want to because you don't have to. Just go ahead and tape it off. It's easier and safer. Subscribe. The Headlight Restoration Pro.